LUTs is a pilot program. What the citizens of Milton Keynes will see is for a period of time, some vehicles running around, um, which will be carrying people who weren't the engineers, members of the public, around from place to place with an autonomous system. So it's very interesting to me doing this in a mixed space. It's not quite a driverless car, it's a bit different from that. On a place on the pavements where it has to be sympathetic to people's movements. When you get into the vehicle, um, there will be an iPad and the iPad will say, would you like to be autonomous? And you'll say, yeah, I would. And it will guide you through a few things. So we'll say, okay, well, put your foot on the brake to start with. So you know that you're in a controlled position. Put the steering wheel in the middle. Okay, take your hands off the steering wheel release the brake, you're off. And then the uh, iPad will go to a blue screen saying Selenium has control. When the vehicle is autonomous, it needs to know where it is. So it's taking laser data or camera data, comparing that to its memory and going, I must be here. Okay. Then it needs to say, okay, that's fine, but what's around me? Is there a person? Which way are they moving? Are, is that person going to intersect with how I plan to move or are they walking with me so we're not going to hit each other? So that's perception, what is in the world and, and of course it could be not a person or a car but something completely different. It could be something blowing in the wind. So you don't just want to be running people detectors and car detectors, that's not enough because what about the all the other stuff detector? So you need to have what we call model free perception there so we don't know what it is but there's something in the way. So I've done where am I? and I've got what's around me. The next bit was what do I do with those things? So you've got to plan a path. I think I'm gonna go along that route. And what we would always do is the machine plans 50 times a second to stop. And 50 times a second, something else goes, go on, just give me one more tick. Another 50 of a second, it's fine. So if anything stops working, the whole thing goes, see, I told you I should not have been autonomous. There's all kinds of architectural systems issues that come out that really every roboticist should know about. And then on top of that, you have human you should trust me. So you have visual aids that say I've got this, I am working, I am live. So you can't have a static picture and say the machine has control. You have to have things moving on it that can't have crashed. And how do you get that kind of trust and then human interaction for I've seen that, it's okay I have seen that person. So there's a layer on top of that that's quite interesting. And that comes down to million lines of code. Working on the LUTS project has been tremendously helpful because it has cemented our role as a systems engineering institute very much. So uh, it's, much, it's, it's a difference between developing individual competencies for a robot, like for example, find cars in this image, uh, and actually having a coherent system that needs to do the full stack, the full end-to-end -end from the raw sensor data all the way up to the smartphone app that actually hails your vehicle, right? Um, those are tremendous differences, and the more forcing functions we can find that push us out into the real world, make us interact with the real world, make our machines interact and learn from the real world, uh, the better it is. So from that perspective, the LUTs project has been tremendous. The LUTS project has afforded us a brilliant opportunity and that's to field a complete autonomy system in a vehicle. Um, and that's great, so it all brings all of these different components of where am I, what's around me, what should I do, into one piece of software that's going to solve that problem and you're going to sit in it and it's going to drive you around the town. I've worked with such amazing people over the past years and all of that work comes down to one blue icon that says vehicle has control. It's like this, this extraordinary condensation. All the work that Ingmar and I have done together, all that thinking with students and postdocs and engineers and software engineers and design, all of that comes down to vehicle has control. And that's just the start, right? It's not done. It gets better and better and better and better.